Hello, welcome you all to Free Technical Learning's YouTube channel. In the last class, we have covered elastic constant. So, from that, we have the idea about engineering component. Like in that case of design, we consider all those material we take into account are having same values of elastic constant along different directions and also at different point inside the body. Now, in this particular lecture, we are going to cover regarding load concept and the stress how depending upon the load the stress is getting generated inside a particular component or a particular member now how can we distinguish load so load if we go on differentiation we can differentiate load into three different criteria like the first is with respect to the time and the second is with respect to the cross section of the member and third one is with respect to the distribution of the load and now if we go for the time we can differentiate load into two criteria like first your static loading and the second one is your dynamic loading the first one is static loading can be differentiated into two criteria like the first one is dead loading and the second one is your gradually applied loading now dead loading the magnitude of the load is remain constant with respect to time and also the direction remain constant with respect to the time now the, for an example we can take like the load of a gear is acting on a particular shaft the load of the gear is remaining constant with respect to the time and it is acting towards the center of the earth so this kind of load is called your dead load now GAL gradually applied load now suppose a person having 70 kg weight is sitting on a chair what happens the whole load that person is having comes onto the chair within one or two second span or more than uh, like a uh, three second like maximum of three seconds span it can take so what happens in that particular case the whole load the person is having comes onto the chair so this particular condition the 70 kg load comes on the chair for one or two second or maximum of three seconds like it, in that particular condition what is happening the load value is increasing with respect to time like initially when the man is about to sit the load is zero but uh, at two second span or three second span maximum of like the load is becoming maximum so this is called gradually applied load now like this is the example of your gradually applied load so you can switch to the dynamic loading condition now if we go on distinguish of that particular dynamic loading condition we can distinguish dynamic loading into two different criteria like first one is your suddenly applied load or shock load okay or impact load like the example uh, in that case the load is acting uh, for a very small amount of time might be microsecond millisecond of span so what happens like for an example a bowler is bowling and a batsman is hitting the ball with a bat what happens the whole load of that particular ball is coming on that particular bat for a very very small instant of time so what happens that whole load is acting uh, for a very frequent time so that is called your suddenly applied load or shock load or impact load like in that case also we can differentiate load other one is cyclic loading or a variable loading or reversal of loading so what happens in that case of cyclic loading like a load uh, is varying like that sometime it is becoming plus 50 kilo newton sometime it is becoming minus 50 kilo newton that is called your cyclic loading or variable loading it may be like plus 50 minus 20 also so that is your variable loading and in that case of a uh, reversal of loading the first one that is called cyclic loading so what happens in that particular cyclic loading in that case of design we will consider like s n diagram from s n diagram we can plot the s for strength and n for number of revolution so uh, we will be having the curve so from that curve by act, uh, using your or uh, interpolation method we can find out the amount of like uh, uh, stress for a particular like life okay so that, that is your all about cyclic loading now if we go for effect of different different loading condition we will have different value of stress and also different value of elongation induced in the particular body or member 
what happens in that case of your gradually applied loading GAL the stress if it is suppose sigma then elongation delta L will be PL upon AE so P is the load acting L is the length of that particular component A is the cross sectional area upon E is the Young's modulus of that particular material now if we go for sudden loading sudden loading like a load that is a kind of impact load but from zero height so in that particular impact loading condition we were maintaining height of h so now what uh, it is happening like uh, the height is becoming zero so impact factor is two like that that way we will be seeing the formula of impact factor also so that is also shown in the screen so in that particular formula we can see like when h is zero the impact factor value is two okay now we can look at the factor of uh, like sudden loading condition here what is happening the stress is becoming twice and also the elongation uh, it is also becoming twice along the longitudinal direction so what happens in that particular case of your or uh, like a uh, impact loading condition in that case it is also becoming more than twice like there is an impact factor that is a root under 1 plus root under 1 plus 2h by delta l static exactly shown on that particular screen now we will be looking at the effect of different different loading condition on your stress analysis okay now if we distinguish load with respect to your area okay or cross section of the member we can distinguish load into two criteria like first is your normal loading when the load is acting along the longitudinal axis of the member and perpendicular to that particular cross section of the member the load is called your normal loading now in that particular normal loading we can distinguish into two criteria like when the load is acting along the longitudinal axis of the member that is called your normal loading but when it is maintaining like it is not acting at the center or along the longitudinal axis of the member it is acting parallel to that of the longitudinal axis of the member what is happening the effect is getting changed so that is called your eccentric axial loading or eccentric normal loading like the effect of eccentric normal loading will be different from that of your axial loading condition okay so uh, further we can distinguish uh, this loading into two different criteria like one is your compressive and other one is your tensile so what happens in that particular case of your or uh, like a shear stress condition the load when acting perpendicular to that particular axis of your longitudinal axis or along the cross section okay parallel to the cross section that is called your along the cross section that means your parallel to the cross section that is your shear loading so what happens in that case of shear loading condition the stress is shear stress so uh, when the load is acting perpendicular but at the center that is your transverse shear loading condition but when this is acting perpendicular but a maintaining an eccentricity e that is not at the center maintaining a distance from the center that is called your eccentric transverse shear loading so what happens in that case of your eccentric transverse shear loading the effect of uh, this particular load will be different from that only transverse shear load if we go on the variation of the load with respect to your uh, like uh, uh, distribution of the load we can distinguish load into two criteria first is your concentrated load and the second one is your distributed load concentrated load for, further can be differentiated into two criteria like that is your concentrated point load and your concentrated moment and the distributed load can be differentiated into three criteria like your uniformly distributed load uniformly varying load and uniformly distributed moment okay so now uh, in that broad classification we'll be going for the effect of load like when the load is acting along the longitudinal axis of the member and perpendicular to that of the cross section the stress induced in that particular component is called your normal stress or axial normal stress now 
what happens when the load is acting parallel to that of the cross section of the member uh, and uh, that is called your eccentric uh, like eccentric axial normal loading condition so in that case the effect is your the body is getting subjected to normal stress plus one your bending moment is also induced in the particular component like the, due to that particular eccentricity that particular eccentricity will cause the bending moment in the component okay so diagram is shown in that particular like uh, video so next we will be uh, looking forward for the effect of transverse shear loading so when the load is acting in that particular fashion we mentioned transverse shear loading okay what happens the load is acting at the center so the effect is your one is your shear force other is your like uh, bending moment and there is no twisting moment and no axial loading so what happens in that particular case of your eccentric transverse shear loading the load is not acting at the center there is an eccentricity so there is shear force bending moment and one additional twisting moment will be there so the uh, load will try to like twist that particular member so twisting moment will get generated what happens in that case of your or pure axial loading like that was your along the longitudinal axis of the member now that is pure bending so what is your pure bending when a particular load like equal uh, equal and opposite amount of load is acting in a particular plane such a way it is trying to bend that particular component so the what is happening the component is trying to bend due to that equal and opposite loading condition so that is your like pure bending now when the load is acting in such a fashion like the uh, effect is like uh, equal and opposite load trying to twist that particular member so what happens the effect is called your twisting moment that is pure twisting moment okay. now as we have the idea of different loading condition and the effect of that particular load so we can now switch to the concept of like when a particular member is subjected to your normal loading condition so this question is asked to you what is the maximum amount of normal stress on that particular plane so what will be your answer your answer will be zero because the load is acting normal to that particular plane so that plane is subjected to only normal stress okay so no serious stress in that particular plane but what happens if that particular question is asked to you what is the maximum amount of shear stress inside the body so a body can be differentiated into different many planes like thousand uh, two thousand or more than that planes you can imagine inside a body at a particular plane so in that uh, like uh, all those uh, plane will be subjected to shear stress also so there will be a plane on which the maximum amount of shear stress occurs okay so in that fashion we can calculate the maximum amount of shear stress so in that particular or uh, one dimensional state of stress we consider a plane and considering that particular plane if we consider at an oblique plane at an angle theta we can calculate the value of normal stress on that particular plane we'll see in the next lecture how uh, one dimensional state of stress at different uh, plane the stress are varying similarly we'll be switching to the two dimensional state of stress and what is happening in that particular case we'll also be uh, having that idea through more circle so we'll be discussing on that so after that uh, whatever we have covered must revise the lecture and all those formula are important for your or uh, competitive exam purpose your gate purpose must look at those formula and revise such a way that those are memorized to you okay so uh, this is all about the second load concept uh, stay tuned we'll be uploading much more videos and all those exciting knowledge and all those implementation of the knowledge thank you that's all